Yeah, let's, let's make the other rooms jealous that they're not in here. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> Woo, there we go. There we go. Well, I deeply thank each and every one of you. So much gratitude to share around. It's really you guys in the audience that has made this all possible. Um, and I'm excited to roll into our next presentation. So we have Anya Antti joining the stage. Anya is a dear friend and almost a full New Yorker, right? You got to do your 10 years first to get it, right? But uh, I've, been, I've been watching Anya participate in our industry for such a long time. And we're here at the Optic Stage, which is the outdoor travel and culture. And here we are bringing a portrait and self-portrait photographer to the stage. But I think that this is really important for this audience because there are opportunities for us to tell stories the way that Anya tells stories. And I can't wait to see how the rest of you in the audience pivot to see her story and her imagery and to see the motivation that you all get when you go out into the wild and start taking pictures of your friends or your family. Um, so without further ado, please join the stage, Anya Auntie. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. I'm very honored and excited to be here and thank you, Beanish, for having me. So my name is Anne Anti. I'm a fine conceptual photographer and I specialize in on-location surrealistic female portraiture with an ethereal and whimsical twist. For me, photography is the perfect medium for self-expression through imaginative storytelling. My art is a reflection for my passion for beauty and craving for everyday enchantment. I strive to go beyond traditional portraiture by constructing dreamlike sets that rely on beauty, symbolism, metaphors, and association to convey fantasy and whimsy. I never just take a photo. I usually use photography as a way of collecting material to create something that is impossible to capture. I usually travel to real locations and use real props. And my creative process usually involves uh, scouting locations, creating elaborate installations, props, costumes, and digital manipulation to bring my imagination to life and tell imaginary stories through my art. So you may wonder why I'm here today on the optic stage because I'm not a wildlife or a landscape photographer. But in today's talk, I would like to show you how I mixed, I used a mix of landscape, portrait, and conceptual photography and tools of storytelling to create meaningful art and advocate for something that I care about. I will walk you through the process of creating my climate change awareness projects two and a half seconds that I created a few years ago in Iceland and the ideas behind it. I will use this project as an example of how to create meaningful art and use your artistic voice to talk about what's important to you. So I got into photography around 2009, and for almost a decade, I've been creating this whimsical and storytelling female uh, portraits. Even though they became a hallmark of my work and brought me to where I'm here today, I always felt like they lacked a little bit of meaning. So as I grew my audience, I decided that it was time to bring more meaning to my work and use my artistic voice to talk about what is important to me. So, Let's talk a little bit what is meaningful art. Meaningful art is a form of art that has significance and importance beyond its aesthetic value. It is the art that communicates a message, evokes emotions, creates an impact, or inspires reflection and action. Meaningful art has the power to connect with people on a deeper level and to spark meaningful conversations and discussions. Meaningful art is a powerful tool for social and cultural impact, personal exp expression, and connection between people. It has the ability to inspire change and encourage people to think and act differently, making it an essential part of human expression and experience. And creating such art can be important for artists' personal growth as it can bring more value to their work and make a difference. By creating their art, an artist and photographer can express different ideas, topics, and messages that are important to them. And for me, it was the destruction of our planet, environment, and climate change crisis. As I grew my audience and built my following, I decided that it was time and I had the responsibility to bring light to the issues that I care about. I wanted to, my work to matter and at least try and make some difference. The pressure from human activity is having a catastrophic impact on the environment that endangers our own existence. 
That's why I decided to use my photography and my artistic voice to express how I feel and share my fears for the future. I wanted to bring more meaning to my work and to create a strong message for all the people out there the best way I can by using conceptual photography. And that's how the idea of creating my climate change awareness project Two and a Half Seconds came to life. Two and a Half Seconds is a series of photographs that highlight environmental crisis through metaphors and symbolism. I used a mix of landscape, a portrait, and conceptual photography and where I placed my subject into beautiful landscapes and used tools of storytelling to convey ideas behind them. Each photograph illustrates and represents a specific environmental issues you're using allegorical figures and subjects, props, landscapes, costumes, and digital manipulation. In total, I illustrated eight different environmental issues and created 15 different artworks. And we have global warming, sea level rise, extreme weather, plastic pollution, deforestation, pollution, glacier melt, and greenhouse gases. But the inspiration and the trigger for this idea was visiting Iceland. I've always cared for our planet, I've always loved to travel, I love nature, and I've always been amazed and fascinated by its beauty. And I've traveled to quite a few places before, but none of them could compare to what I saw in Fallen Iceland. And visiting Iceland for the first time had a great impact on me and made me realize that our planet is fragile and its beauty may disappear. And the thought that these beautiful landscapes, this beautiful nature is being affected and destroyed by the climate change became very shocking to me. So I decided to capture and preserve Iceland's incredible beauty through my art while I still can. And with my project, Two and a Half Seconds, I hope to bring awareness to climate change to start a conversation about the issue, to talk about the urgency of the crisis and the seriousness of its consequences. I also hope to inspire people for some change and action. And I will talk more in depth about this project, but for now, let's talk a little bit about what is conceptual photography and how I create my conceptual work. So conceptual photography is a genre of photography that emphasizes the idea or concept behind the image, rather than the subject or the aesthetic qualities of the photograph. It often involves the use of usual uh, visual metaphors, symbols, and stage scenes to convey a message or explore a concept. Storytelling photography aims to tell a story or convey a message through that concept. Storytelling photography is a powerful way to communicate a message or evoke emotions through visual storytelling. And in conceptual photography, there should be a video, sorry, <laughs> it's not playing, but you can look at my face. Um, in conceptual photography, a photographer typically be begins with a concept or an idea. Then they use photography as a medium to convey that idea or a concept. And a photographer may use various different techniques, um, such as light and composition, digital manipulation, to convey those ideas. And overall, conceptual photography is a powerful way to express and explore different ideas, explore different themes, uh, such as from social and political issues to personal experiences and emotions. And in order to create conceptual photography, I usually use tools of storytelling. Storytelling tools are the techniques and resources used to craft compelling ideas that engage and resonate with the audience. And these tools help create a concept and a story. And these tools are character development, styling, location and setting, mood, tone, and emotion, association, symbolism, metaphor, and strong title. And these storytelling tools are essential for me to create my conceptual work. So let's talk a little bit more about each one of them. Character development. Conceptual photography is usually not just a portrait of a person. In conceptual photography, your main subject usually represents something, an idea or a concept, and play an important role in the storytelling. Their pose, body language, and facial expressions are also important because body language and facial expressions make a significant uh, role in how we communicate. So for example, imagine your main subject. Are they joyful, sad, or peaceful? Are they smiling or frowning their eyebrows? 
And all these little details help us communicate with the audience and tell more about our ideas. So for my two and a half seconds climate change awareness project, um, my subject represented either a part of the nature that is being affected by the issue or a collective human that is witnessing and experiences these issues. I used body sympathetic language and sad, anxious facial expressions to depict sorrow, anxiety, and despair. For example, most of my subjects are looking down with sad facial expressions. Um, they have very un um, uncomfortable poses to make my scene look more uncomfortable. Next is styling. Styling choices for your subjects, such as clothing, hair and makeup, can be also very important and be a part of your storytelling. For example, imagine your main subject Maybe it's, uh, they're wearing a tattered dress or a perfectly pressed ball gown. And those details also impact your story. For my climate change awareness project, two and a half seconds, I used both simple dresses and elaborate costumes. For the images where the costume wasn't important, I used simple timeless dresses or vintage inspired clothing because they help create that fairy tale atmosphere and also they are non destructing and not overpowering. And the rest played a vital role in the story development. For example, for the deforestation image, I created this ball gown made out of the moss to represent flora and the forests. For the glacier melt images, I created this costume that represents the melting ice. This costume looks like melting ice with ice crystals and water drops. And at the same time, it doesn't look like it's a piece of clothing, but rather a part of this creature that represents glaciers. Setting. The setting and location for your artwork is also important and can be a vital part of the storytelling. It can create a sense of place and atmosphere and become this immersive world to draw your audience. And my, life for, my love for Iceland wasn't the only reason why I chose this country for the project. Iceland offers a very broad variety of different landscapes that were able to accommodate all of my ideas and all of my concepts and become a vital role, vital part in my storytelling. For example, for the deforestation image, the deforestation image I shot in the iconic Icelandic lava mass to blend my subject with nature and create a sense of unity. The glacier melt images I photographed me next to the real glacier. The diamond beach in Iceland is the beach with black sand and these beautiful blocks of ice that break away from the glacier. They float, melt, and are washed ashore by the waves. The greenhouse gases images I photographed at Hvevir. Hvevir is a geothermal spot in Iceland full of hot sulfur gas. And hot sulfur gas represents the greenhouse gases. Mood, tone, and emotion. Establish a consistent mood and tone throughout your images, either it's light or dark. And also weather and time of the day can be important in your storytelling and set the atmosphere. For example, shooting during the broad daylight can create a cheerful and joyful atmosphere. On the contrary, shooting during the overcast day and rainy weather can create a feeling of sadness and anxiety. That's why I photographed my whole series either during overcast day and rainy weather or I waited till the end of the day for that blue hour and soft gloomy light. Association symbolism and metaphor. You can use visual symbols to convey abstract ideas and themes. Association is a mental connection or relationship that viewers make between different elements or components within a work of art, between ideas, feelings, objects, and then can be influenced by the viewer's personal experiences, cultural background, and knowledge. Association can also be created through the use of symbolism where certain objects or images are used to represent abstract ideas or concept. For example, a dove can represent peace, and a snake usually is associated with deceit or cunning. 
Symbolism in art refers to the use of specific object, images, or colors to represent abstract ideas or concept, often with a deeper or hidden meaning between their literal interpretation. It is indirect suggestion to express ideas, emotions, and stages of mind. Symbolism is one of the most important elements to give your art depth and meaning. Metaphor. Metaphor in art refers to the use of imagery or object to represent an abstract idea or concept, often by comparing it to something else. In literature, a metaphor is an abstract idea representative or symbolic of something else. For example, when we say his hands are ice, we don't literally mean his hands are ice, right? We just mean that they are very cold. And in visual arts, we do something similar. In visual art, a metaphor is an image that the viewer is meant to understand as a symbol for something else. For example, paper boats can be a metaphor for water or voyage. And then in my two and a half seconds uh, project, there were a lot of symbols and metaphors there. For example, at, on the greenhouse gases image, I hold a planet in a plastic bag. The plastic bag is a metaphor for greenhouse gases that trap the sun energy, warm the planet, and create the greenhouse effect. For the deforestation image, I created this uh, ball gown made of moss, and I created this dark burned dead patch on a dress to represent and symbolize the destruction of the forest and some glowing charcoals uh, at the bottom to represent wildfires. For the pollution images, I created this gas mask with a tank to represent the bad air quality and the little plant inside of the gas tank to symbolize the only air fresh source. For the plastic pollution images, I created the jellyfish made out of a single use plastic item to represent marine life that's being gravely affected by the plastic ocean pollution. Strong title. I used two and a half seconds as a title because I wanted to invoke the power of numbers and perspective to create a strong, straightforward, and shocking effect. And here is why. Did you know that planet Earth is four and a half billion years old and mankind is about 140,000 years old? If we compress the Earth's existence into a normal full day of 24 hours, then we've been on this planet for only two and a half seconds. In this two and a half seconds, we've become the dominant species with a rapidly growing population, causing a catastrophic impact on the environment. We have created the industrial revolution and burned fossil fuels, creating more carbon in an atmosphere than ever before. We have caused global warming at a record pace, endangering our own existence. We have cut trees, destroyed forests more than ever before, polluted air, water, and soil. We have created an island of waste the size of state Texas in the middle of the ocean. We have caused the fourth mass animal extinction. Three quarters of the Earth's land surface is under pressure from the human activity. In just two and a half seconds, we've turned the planet into our own personal factory. It took almost four and a half billion years all of evolution for us to exist, and we have changed so much in so little time. So, two and a half seconds is a project, is a series of photographs that highlight environmental crisis through metaphors and symbolism. Each photograph illustrates and represents a specific environmental issue using allegorical, allegorical figures, subjects, props, costumes, and natural landscapes. In total, I illustrated eight different environmental issues and created 15 different artworks. It was a very challenging, extensive, and elaborate project. It took me three years in total to develop concepts, find money through crowd crowdfunding campaigns and sponsorships, build and source props, get my team together, and travel to Iceland on a 10-day trip to photograph everything. And then another additional post-production process of going through material, selecting images, and editing. So first, it took me a year to develop all the concepts, to work on my pre-production, and trying to find money for my project. At first, I created a historic campaign and tried to raise the money through crowdfunding, but unfortunately it failed. I didn't raise the needed amount. But then I was so lucky to find some sponsors, and one of them were B&H. 
Because the project demanded uh, specialized equipment for my project to photograph, to capture both the artwork itself and some behind the scenes footage, um, that's why I reached out for BH for help. They got interested and they provided me with a camera, lenses, and a drone to film all the behind the scenes videos. So thank you so much for BH for helping me bring this project to life. And then it took me another year of finding and sourcing and building props, getting my team together, and go to Iceland on a 10-day trip to photograph everything. So this is me and my husband. It's supposed to be a video, but unfortunately it's not playing, so sorry about that. Um, so I traveled together with my husband, who was assisting me in filming all the behind-the-scenes videos and photos with the model and her friend. We drove across the whole country, stayed in different places, and photographed in different locations. Each location I carefully researched while preparing for the project and chose specifically for a specific concept. I also had two bags of luggage, one with personal items and one with props, and two backpacks of gear. So let's talk a little bit more about each concept, what they represent, and how they were created. Global warming. This artwork illustrates and represents global warming and rising global temperature. The idea behind this concept is that the planet is warming, so it starts to melt, and all the continents and oceans are sliding down and dripping. For this concept, I used a custom-made prop uh, that looks like melting planet. I didn't make it myself. I commissioned another artist to make it for me. And it was made out of the desktop globe, some clay, foil, and then it was hand-painted. I wanted this uh, concept to be a self-portrait, to, to make it a little bit more personal, where I stand and hold the planet, and the paint is melting, wrapping my fingers, and dripping. The globe had already had some fake drips made out of the clay, but then we also used some body paint to put on my fingers and blend my skin together with the planet to create that melting effect. I wanted this photograph to be a close-up portrait with the main attention to the planet, and some blurred uh, landscape in the back. So I just needed some beautiful landscape. And while we were driving through Iceland, I saw this incredible location with little canyon and waterfall in the river. It was absolutely beautiful. I loved it, so I decided to photograph it there. During editing, though, I decided that I wanted more mountains and fog in the background, so I took them from another photo and swapped it. Then I retouched the globe, I polished it, I removed the seams from the desktop globe, and I edited the drips to make them a little bit more realistic. Sea level rise. The concept of this photograph represents the rising sea level levels and coastal floods caused by rising temperatures and melting ice. The idea behind this concept is that the sea level has risen, so everything around is getting flooded. And in this scene, we see a person anxiously sitting on a rooftop. Everything around is flooded. We can only see rooftops of the building and some belongings floating in the water. This photograph was probably the trickiest of all because I didn't know how it would turn out until I got back to New York and started editing. But I had a perfect location in mind for this concept. This pool is an open public space in South Iceland, surrounded by beautiful landscapes. It's an open public place. Uh, there is no admission fee, no fences, no administration. It's filled with hot water, so people go there to swim. So it's a very famous tourist attraction. And uh, there's a small changing room in the back and a white brick wall in the foreground, which I used for my concept. I didn't really... I couldn't really build my setup there and flood the area, right? So I had to work with what I had. So the day before we arrived to Iceland, I went to a local IKEA store and I took some used shipping boxes. And the night before the photo shoot, I tried to transform those shipping boxes into resemblance of this rooftop. I glued some pieces of cardboard together and spray painted them. We also had some stuff with us, some belongings, such as a suitcase, some dinerware, and pieces of fabric, which I later turned into floating belongings. My team swam in the pool, holding them in the water so they won't sink, and I photographed them separately. And 
And during the editing, I turned the white brick wall into the building, the cardboard rooftop to the rooftop, and um, flooded the area. So the cardboard rooftop didn't really work out the way that I hoped, so I took a stock photograph of the rooftop and, and changed it. But nonetheless, it created a great base for me with all the shapes, uh, color, highlights, and shadows. The uh, changing room in the back uh, worked out really well as a flooded building. Uh, like I already mentioned, it's a very famous tourist attraction, so people swim there, and I had to remove them. And I extended the water of the pool, flooding the area. And it took me over five hours to edit this photograph, but I'm very proud of how it turned out. Plastic pollution. The idea behind this concept is to show the negative impact of plastic pollution on our ocean and marine life. And to illustrate this idea, I created a giant jellyfish made out of the single-use uh, plastic items that represent all the plastic in the ocean and the affected marine life. The subject in this photograph um, has a very anxious facial expression. On the second image, she's suffocating from all the plastic. She's wearing a simple one-toned uh, dress that matches with the color of the jellyfish, and she slightly reaches out to touch, his, touch it as if she's trying to figure out what to do with it or maybe fix it. And for this concept, I used a clear transparent umbrella that I've already photographed before quite a few times, so I decided to give it another final job to do. And since I started to prepare for this project and learn more about the environment and our impact on our planet, I started to implement changes to my lifestyle and try to live more consciously. That's why I try not to buy drinks in plastic bottles or plastic bags. And obviously for this project, I didn't want to go out and buy them new. So I reached out to my friends and followers and asked them to donate their plastic bottles that they were going to throw away anyway. But creating the jellyfish prop at home wasn't an option, so I just squeezed everything into my luggage, pressed it, went to Iceland, and the night before the photo shoot, I took the umbrella as a base, and I hot glued all the single-use plastic items, such as bottles, forks, and bags, to the umbrella. And during the editing, I fixed the shape of the umbrella, gave it more dimension, removed the seams from the umbrella, uh, I also cleaned up the black sand, removing all these little rocks, and I created this little tra trail of plastic bottles to give a nice finishing touch to the concept. Deforestation. The concept of this photograph uh, represents deforestation and forest degradation. And to illustrate this concept, I posed myself in a moss dress to represent the flora and the forest and create this sense of unity and be the one with nature. And that's why I also photographed this concept in the moss location as well, to blend my subject with the surrounding. Then I created this dark burned dead patch on the dress to symbolize the destruction of the dying forest and the glowing charcoals represent wildfires. The location for this concept is an iconic Icelandic lava moss. The Icelandic lava moss is very fragile and it's very harmful to touch or step on it. That's why we're staying on a tourist trail and shooting right next to it as much as possible. And the moss dress I made myself. I used a secondhand ball gown that I got in a thrift store. Then I got some rolls of moss that basically look like mesh, sticky mesh with a real dry moss on top that I got in the arts and crafts store. And I just stitched my rolls of moss together like a new fabric on top of the dress and it took me several nights to finish this dress. When I was preparing for my trip, I was really worried how I'm going to transport this dress to Iceland without ruining it. But I just folded a few times, I shoved it into the plastic bags plastic bag I put into my luggage and hoped for the best. But luckily, when I was going to fix and mend it on location, but luckily when I arrived, it survived the trip to Iceland and back without any damage. And during editing, I matched the color of the dress to the surroundings, to the moss, I blended it with the moss, 
and then I added extra moss hills uh, for the fo in the foreground to create more depth and dimension to the uh, image. And then, like I already mentioned before, I created this dark burnt depth patch and added some glowing charcoals at the bottom. Plastic pollution. The idea behind this concept was to illustrate bad air quality and overall pollution. And therefore, my subject is wearing working robes to add a post-apocalyptic feel to the image. She is wearing oxygen mask with a tank um, that contains a little plant inside to represent the only um, air source for breathing. I also added the snow texture last minute in Photoshop, um, and I wasn't sure about it, but then in the end, it reminded me of ashes, so I kept it because I felt like it's a very nice finishing touch for the concept. And the mask tank, uh, tank prop was also custom made, uh, commissioned by me for another artist. It was built out of the plastic fish tank, uh, a real oxygen mask. Then we attached some straps to be able to wear it as a backpack. There was a tube that connected mask to the tank and a little fake plant inside of it. And then we spray painted everything and decorated it. While shooting on location, it was raining and very humid, so this fish tank was constantly getting foggy, so we had to wipe with our t-shirts and um, towels to be able to see the plant inside. But nonetheless, it was probably one of the easiest photo shoot to make. And we drove for hours to this location, and I had no idea of what to expect of it because I've never been there before. But when we arrived, it was absolutely beautiful. Uh, uh, it was perfect. In front of me was this beautiful glacier, and the ground was almost black, covered with rocks, and no vegetation, which served the idea even better. And it helped me create this post apocalyptic feel, and it looked almost like another planet. Glacier melt. The concept of this photograph represents the rapid melt of glaciers, ice sheets, and ice caps because of the rises in temperatures. The idea behind it is to show the threat of them disappearing completely, the consequences of the ice thaw, and show how glaciers indicate as climate change, um, act as climate change indicators. And this was probably the most challenging and trickiest project concept of the whole project. I wanted to create this costume that would represent melting ice. I wanted it to look like melting ice with ice crystals and water drops, but at the same time look like it's not a piece of clothing, but rather a part of this ice creature that represents glaciers. And the costume I made myself. Uh, first I created this top. I used tulle fabric. I roughly stitched together it on the side, creating this kind of like t-shirt. And then I used um, acrylic uh, crystal um, pieces and hot glued them directly to the fabric. And I also wanted to create this feeling that these crystals are attached directly to the skin, not the fabric, so I used very sheer translucent tool uh, nude, with nude color. Then I created loose skirt, also attached a few crystals to it uh, to keep it simple and not to overpower it. And then I got uh, nude sheer tights and also hot glued crystals of different sizes to, to it. And I was very happy with the costume. The only thing that was left was um, water drops. So I spent a lot of time to figure out how to make my costume drip. And then I figured out that I can use acrylic teardrop beads. So I created additional sleeves for my top and the day before the shoot, I sew these beads directly to the sleeves and the costume. This photo shoot was also very difficult. I wanted it to photograph next to the real glacier. Dammit Beach is a beach with black sand in the south of Iceland. It's constantly covered with huge blocks of ice that break away from glacier, float, melt, washed into the ocean, and then are washed ashore by the waves. And this black sand beach is all, always covered by these translucent ice, ice cubes that look like diamonds, hence the name. It was very cold, it was almost freezing, it was windy and it was raining, uh, and my model was wearing only the nude bodysuit and the ice uh, costume. 
So I had to be very quick and very efficient. And during the editing, I added more uh, ice blocks and ice chunks in the back and in the front of my image to create more dramatic effect. I also removed some of the ice cubes behind my model for the contrast. I um, retouched and polished the costume, removed some seams, added more water drips, and then in the end, I created this water puddle um, under my model, under my subject, to create this melting effect. Greenhouse gases. The concept of this photograph represents the increased concentration of man-made greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane. And the idea behind this concept is to show the negative impact of burning the fossil fuels that create more uh, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and disrupt our atmospheric balance that keeps our climate stable. To illustrate this concept, I use an inflatable earth ball toy uh, and a big plastic bag. That symbolizes the layer of these greenhouse gases that trap the sun energy, warm the planet, and intensify the greenhouse effect. And the main challenge for this concept was to find the prop that would look like Earth, but also would be big enough, and, um, but lightweight and compact, because I was traveling to another country with limited luggage space. But then it hit me. I can use an inflatable ball toy with Earth print on it. It weighs almost nothing, takes almost space, and looks perfect on the images. So we drove to the location, we were tired, we were exhausted, and the initial idea was to photograph everything, then have some rest, and photograph everything the next day. But the evening light was so beautiful that I decided to photograph everything immediately despite of the exhaustion. And I'm very glad I did, because the next day it was very sunny all day, which I never shoot with and was also inappropriate for my project. And the location uh, for this concept was also perfect. Kvevir is a geothermal spot in Iceland full of boiling sulfur. It is famous for bubbling colorful pools of mud and steaming fumaroles emitting hot sulfur gas. And this hot sulfur gas coming from the ground symbolized the greenhouse gases. Extreme weather. These two images illustrate and represent extreme weather changes. For the first one, I used an umbrella with acrylic raindrop beads. The idea behind this image is that the store is coming, but no matter how hard you try to hide from it, it's going to affect everyone. And in the second image, my subject is wearing a raincoat and rain boots. She's holding a broken inverted umbrella that is being blown away by the wind. And the wind is so strong that she is almost flying. So two and a half seconds was a huge project and I'm very proud of it. I'm using photography as my unique voice to express how I feel and share my fear for the future. I want to bring more meaning to my work and create a strong message for all the people out there. And I hope that my art is clearer and louder than words. Thank you. Anya, we do have some time for some Q&A. So pop sure. up some hands and let me see who's got some questions and I'll come on over with the mic. Any questions, y'all? Coming over. Thank you. I found your uh, pictures very thought provoking. Uh, just wondering uh, what would be your next uh, project? Would you want to continue on raising this awareness or seek another issue that you want to cause attention to? Um, it's a great question. I honestly haven't thought about it yet because I still. Um, talking about this project, I want to bring more awareness about this project that I've done, but I don't see why I don't do another project in the future, sure. Any other questions? Coming on the mic. I just wanted to ask how long is the actual video? I'm sorry? The video that yes. you made. Is it actually two and a half seconds of just photographs? Oh, no, there was just some behind-the-scenes footage, and 
I also have a, a short highlight video clip uh, where I show all the behind the scenes and the artwork. So you didn't miss anything uh, important. <laughs> no, I'm just curious because I'm very interested in a musical group that sounds about very, you know, proudly about the environment and it would go very well with your, your project. Yeah, I have all these videos on my YouTube channel. If anybody's interested, just Google my name and mm -hmm. put down my name in YouTube and it will pop up and you can see there's mm -hmm. all the behind the scenes videos and um, yeah. Oh, great, thank you. You're welcome. What is the best way that you have found to expose this work to others? Is it just on social media or have you had exhibitions that are useful or are printing a book? How would you uh, get this word out to more people? Uh, well, the funny thing that I photographed this project in 2019, right uh, before the COVID hit, and my initial idea was, yes, to do some exhibition and more talks and give it more exposure, but then, you know, what happened? <laughs> so it ruined all my plans, but um, right now it, it lives on social media, and yeah, I'm doing these kind of stocks to bring more awareness to the project. Um, are you exploring any new types of photography that could um, like take this project to the next level, like video art or anything to kind of add to what you've been doing? Um, well, yeah, like I mentioned, we have a lot of uh, behind the scenes footage. Uh, we have a lot of behind the scenes videos and this like promotional video that unfortunately I was, wasn't able to photograph you. Um, but for now, um, maybe an exhibition would be a great next step to do. Hi, a question about how do you monetize um, uh, this project after it's done, like to cover expenses and to pay assistance? Do you work with any U United Nations organizations who could probably use your work and for the different programs? Uh, well, I was lucky to have sponsors to cover the expenses for this project, but uh, I never had an idea to monetize this project. I never wanted to earn, earn from it. Uh, my main goal was just to bring awareness and maybe inspire other people to do more research, to got interested in topic and you know maybe do some change. So earning money was never my intention for this project. So, uh, first of all, thank you for this great promotion of Iceland. I see this the equivalent what Lord of the Rings did for uh, New Zealand. Your work is great promotion for uh, Iceland. Uh, you, you seem extremely skilled in building these uh, props. Uh, I was, you said that fairly recently uh, you joined photography. Why you choose, so if you have another artistic background, uh, and why you specifically choose uh, photography to express. I saw some illustrations as well. I don't know if those were yours. Yes, those so are. So I'm curious to why was specifically photography that uh, draw your attention was the drive for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And congratulations on your Thank works. You. Um, so um, I'm a self-taught. I've never attended any art school or photography. I don't have like art education, but I've always been a creative child. I've been good in like, paintings and crafts and things like that. But because I never went to an art school, uh, I don't really paint. I mean, I mean, I can doodle. You saw my illustrations. That's the maximum that I can do. But that's when I discovered photography. And with photography, it allowed me to express myself and tell those stories, not through painting, but through the you know capturing light and using Photoshop as my, my brush, I guess. I have a question. Yes. What's your take on AI? And how do you see that moving forward? Have you already incorporated any in your, in your art? Um, what's your take? Um, honestly, I don't know. I have no idea where it's going. And to be honest, uh, it's a little scary. I, and I, as a fine art artist, I feel threatened by it, especially all these you know, um, tools that just um, generate images from scratch. So I feel very conflicted about it. But when it comes to Photoshop, the Photoshop is implementing these new, very cool AI tools such as Generative Fill. If anybody of you have uh, tried it, 
it, right now it only exists in beta version. Um, well, that I find great and very useful and I feel excited about it because it's not, I mean, I guess it can generate images from scratch, but I use it, I already tried it, I played with it, so I can see how an artist can use it as a tool versus just, you know, um, generating images. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. It's 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 a hard topic for me. Of course, of course, I feel conflicted and uh, threatened and um, terrified. But I don't know. Maybe I'm pessimist. Maybe it's gonna be amazing, and maybe it just fizzle out, or maybe be gonna transform into something um, that everybody can use in future. I, I think we can all relate, right? It's beautiful and very thought provoking. Thank you so much. Tell us a little about the equipment that you use and how and it seems like it's almost secondary, the camera and, and some of the other stuff, a little bit, of, if you can just touch on that a bit. Uh, yes, to be honest, uh, gear is always secondary to me. So uh, like I mentioned before, I use my camera and my photography more like a way of collecting material than I later stitch together and in Photoshop and create these uh, pieces of artwork. So um, I photograph with Nikon uh, camera. Uh, back then, because it was photographed a few years ago, I was photographing still with my old D600 camera. Now I shoot with Z7. And I used only two lenses, the 50 millimeter 1.4 and 85 1.8, I think. So I only shoot with prime lenses, and my go-to lens is usually 50 millimeter, but uh, for some portraits, like with the one, with the one where I hold the planet, because it's more of a close-up portrait, I use the 85. And um, I didn't use any lighting equipment at all. There was no like LED lights, no flash heads, nothing like that. The only thing that I use is silver reflector, and that's it. And sometimes I use a tripod. One more question so up that's here. That's pretty much it, yeah. That answered, question. that answered his question. Anyone else? We have time for one more question. All right. So most of your work is outdoor, or you do some studio? Uh, work as well? Yeah, mostly it's on location, mostly it's uh, outdoor, and if I use any kind of like indoor space, either it's a studio or sometimes I just shoot in my apartment against the seamless backdrop, I always try to create it as um, more of a set with some additional props and things like that. But yeah, mostly shoot on location. All right, let's hear it for Anya Auntie, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Anya will be at the speaker meet and greet tables, which are just outside in the hallway. So if you want to share some of your images and uh, pick her brain a little bit more, definitely take that opportunity to go catch her. And thank you again, Anya, so much. I think this room is leaving the most inspired right now. So share that with your peers as you see them throughout the rest of the show. Thank you. <laughs>